Hey guys, it's your boy Jez from Whiskify. I just wanted to start off today's video with a quick uh, snapshot from today with Updog. You're probably wondering, what's up, dog? Not much, my man. What's up with you? Love y'all. What's up, guys? Jez here from Whiskify, and welcome to another episode of Whiskify TV. It is episode 123. One, two, three. Who would have guessed it? Actually, this probably would have been better bottle to do later. Nah, we'll work it out. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, your favorite weekly whiskey TV show where I open up bottles and tell you guys all about it, I guess. So let us kick off this week's Whiskey Wednesday with something that I normally wouldn't do. Uh, this being an Australian whiskey, uh, it's not typically part of like the normal protocols that I follow, but we are here anyway. So, I have a bottle of Upshot that is basically an Australian whiskey, and I'll kind of dive into that in just a moment, but I will grab my glass here, and I will get a pour happening for you guys. So, let's pop the top, cheeky little cork pop there, and kind of get this close to the camera. Wasn't a long pour, I know, I'm sorry, but here we are. So, as I said, it is an Australian whiskey, so it is called Upshot Australian Whiskey at Cast Strength. It is batch four as well, so it's relatively fun. It is 126 proof and 63% ABV, aged at three years. It costs about 150 bucks. Uh, the cask they use is Virgin Southern White Oak, whatever that means. And the mash bill is 80% corn, 10% wheat, and 10% malted barley. The story of Whipper Snapper Distillery begins from two gents, one an Aussie, two a US pilot, both pilots, sharing their love for whiskey and bombers, which you guys will notice on the side of the bottle is a bomber, right? So, the Aussie comes back from the war and begins distilling shine in his back shed. Like typical Australian stuff, we're like, yeah, let's get on it, eh? Sick. Uh, the man, being the Aussie, called Vic, passes this recipe on to his neighbour, neighbour Al, and his mate go to Colorado in search for Vic's comrade, being the US bloke, whatever, obviously some years have passed because he obviously isn't alive, so they go looking for a relative, right? Now, this they end up finding this bloke called Coop. Now, it doesn't say whether he is a relative or not. They're just like, yeah, he finds, they go looking for the relative, but they find this bloke, Coop. Could be, I don't know, some homeless guy on the street. Could be a billionaire for all I know. But I do know that he recently sold a distillery. So, they also found a bloke called Frank. Now, Frank has 50 years of master distilling under his belt. And they were like, yeah, you'll do. He's distilled for a few of the major brands in Scotland. I don't know any of them because I don't drink scotch. Weird, right? Now, they set up shop in WA. I don't know who's there. I don't know what's going on over there, but they were just like, yeah, it's over there. The whole story is really loosey-goosey. So I'm just like, okay, that's fine. I'll work with what I have. Now, this offering is just the cask strength upshot that is bottled at 43%, so rather going into the bottle at 43, we're entering at uh, 63. Like, easy stuff, right? Now, yeah, that's just, con like, the idea behind this is just consider it its older brother. They do have other releases in the lineup, but none of which are, like, the upshot, I guess, Brand. It's all just uh, their wheat, their red corn, uh, quinoa whiskey, super funky, right? But yeah, that's uh, that's that. So let us break into the uh, tasting notes. As per usual, I was able to sit down and taste 
kind of go through everything before I kick off and I'm able to kind of get a good idea of what I'm drinking. So, on the nose, when I first kind of cracked the bottle earlier, I was able to get this kind of like a fresh cola note. As you crack a can of Coke or say a bottle of Pepsi, no, probably not Pepsi, I probably want to say Coke, where it's like really sweet, sugar forward, and you kind of know that nose. That is what I got when I popped the top on that. There's, I didn't write this note down earlier, but it's kind of just come through as I play with my Whiskerfy Glen Khan, the big mixing glass I have in front of me. It's the nose I'm getting is more of a like a green oak, but it's still got a heap of those vanillas, those caramels, like a butterscotch note in there as well. And a, a couple of toasted uh, nuts. No, like it feels a bit nutty. Not your beam nuts, but more. I don't know. It it's more lame. Nutty, nutty. Not peanut, but nutty. All right. For the taste. As I give that sucker, big old Kentucky chew. Which is weird because this is not by any means from Kentucky at all. 15,000 Ks on the other side of the world. It's like super thick. So living at 60% obviously she gonna be thick but she is thick. There's a lot of uh, heat working its way around the tip of the tongue but that's about it. Not too much else going on there. There's also a little bit of, I, I've got to grab this note, uh, burnt caramel as well. So as I was tasting it earlier, I was able to really secure this burnt caramel note as I left it on my tongue for a extended period of time. Like a, a reckon, probably would have been about 30 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds, I was flicking it around in my mouth and I'm like, there is this burnt caramel note there. Now for the finish, So I'm going to call this a short finish. It could be a short to medium, but I'm confident on short because it's, it's what I would consider short. I guess it's all up to interpretation. Like someone would say, it's like flash in the pan. I say it's like short to medium, borderline medium. I forgot where I was going with that. Let me, let me retaste. All right, so on that finish, I'm still getting this uh, toasted nuttiness that's really kind of dug its way in there and this just fresh green oak on a relatively short to medium finish. So all in all, eh, it's, uh, that finish is, uh, I guess, lacking is what I'm looking for. That's cool. I haven't missed anything there either, so I'm very happy. Now, on to the buy bar or pass. So, straight off the bat, nose is off tap good. Now, what I mean by that is it's got that fresh cola I wanted, that vanilla, caramel, butterscotch, toasted nuts. There's a lot of notes in there that you can really just take a good bite into and go, yes, there's a lot going on here. Moving on, the price is solid for what I'm considering an Australian bourbon. Uh, bourbon being like only made in the US because that is bourbon rule 101. But we are living at that 80% corn, 10% wheat, and 10% malted barley, which you would find in some bourbon mash bills. But this is my problem. Now, I will market this because of one reason and one reason only. I think it just needs more time. Obviously, you can't rush whiskey. That is one thing you can't control. You put it in a barrel, you hope and pray to those bourbon gods that nothing happens to it, but you are still at the hands of the bourbon gods. 
I think I'm like I'd be in a comfortable position to pay a little bit more to get something that's five to six years old. So if they drop it at what am I 150? Say if we put another 30, 40 bucks on it, maybe 190 at cast strength uh, for even 200, 200 bucks for five, six year old uh, Australian bourbon. That would be something else. I'd obviously get a lot more flavor out of it. Obviously, it cost them a lot more to age it for longer, but that would be the sweet spot. I'd be happy with that. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to mark this down as a bar. Definitely go to your local bars and try some because like, I, I think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of interesting notes going on there. I could definitely get more into it. I'd see how it goes after it opens up a little bit more. Uh, as I said, I don't care about neck pours because that's obviously how you're going to drink it. You're going to obviously open the bottle. The first pouring, you're either going to get A, I like it, B, it needs to open up more, or C, it's horrific. It's not horrific. I reckon it needs to open up more. We'll see how we go. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this new content format because I like recording and I like drinking whiskey. So, hey, I'm here to drink whiskey and talk shit. And if I'm talking shit, I'm drinking whiskey. So, thank you. Love y'all. Hopefully, you enjoy your Whiskey Wednesday. I'm Jez. Stay thirsty. Peace.